my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today is the Feast of Saint James, the patron saint of Spain. He's also one of the saints to whom we go to, especially to ask for strength, for the strength to fight the good fight. And the Gospel of today's Mass gives us a little bit of uh, proof why we should go to St. James for strength. The scene is like this, at least the beginning of the scene in the Gospel, is when the mother of the sons of Zebedee, that's St. James and his brother John, she comes to Jesus with her two sons in tow, and she bows down before Jesus and makes a kind of gesture of wanting something. So we see Jesus asking her, maybe a little nervously, what is it you want? And she replied, a kind of very daring, a very kind of bold request, promise that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom. Now, our Lord's response is not to say immediately no, nor to say yes, but to clarify things. And maybe looking at the two boys, Jesus says, you do not know what you are asking. Because obviously the two boys put mum up to it. Maybe Jesus is always much more kind of responsive to the request made by a woman. And they think, well, this is the way to get the top jobs. And so they drag their mother along to make the request. So Jesus turns around saying, neither yes or no, no, but do you know what you're asking for? Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? He asks James and John. And the two of them, together, very quickly, you can see them replying, we can. Our Lord is not unhappy with that response because he says, very well, you shall eat, drink my cup. But as for seats at my right hand and my left, these are not mine to grant they belong to those to whom they've been allotted by my father. It's kind of a funny one because they kind of don't really get what they were looking for, at least no guarantee. And yet, our, our Lord is very happy with their, we can. And so in this time of prayer, this kind of conversation with you, Lord, we want to pray about that response that you seem to like. Those two words in English, we can. In Latin, it's possumus. What is the meaning of this? And why is that pleasing to you, Lord, the possumus? I, I was thinking of a way of explaining this, and, and what came to my mind was uh, parents, maybe especially a father, with their child. And the delight a mum or dad, but maybe in particular a dad, takes at each step of the child's development, when they're becoming more independent, when they're kind of achieving things. So when they take their first steps, the little child, he toddles over and nobody, nobody just managed, collapses immediately, but the, the, first, the child takes their first two or three steps. Huge achievement. When the child, the little boy, little girl, rides their bicycle for the first time without stabilizers, another great achievement. Or maybe if it's maybe the boy going off fishing with his father and he catches his first fish, where well, the father is even happier than the boy. What dad would leave a child in, their, in a walker all their life or lead their son cycling with stabilizers on their bicycle like at the age of 18 or something. It would be very strange. But now when the boy or the girl comes to maturity, we can see the parent saying, that's my child. And it's only right because if we've been given feet, well, that's to walk. And if we've been given capacities, that is... There, that has to be realized. This is the person coming to maturity. Now, it's no different with God. God made us with so many capacities, and he is delighted to, to see us coming to maturity spiritually also. A famous theologian of the very early century, St. Irenaeus, 
he put this in a very kind of memorable little phrase, and this is it. The glory of God is man fully alive. So fully alive, you or me, being everything we can be, mainly thinking spiritually, but in other ways also. That it gives glory to God. God is delighted. And so when James and John intone their posthumous or we can, they're kind of saying that. We can do it. We're sure we can do it. And you, Lord, are happy. You're very happy with that. The opposite of that is a kind of discouragement, which is not really a Christian attitude at all, even though sometimes we think it's humility, but it's not really when we say, oh, I can't do it. There's a famous little poem, and I don't know who wrote it, but this is it. The man who misses all the fun is he who says it can't be done. In solemn pride he stands aloof and greets each venture with reproof. Had he the power he'd efface the history of the human race, we'd have no radio or motor cars, no street lit by electric stars, no telegraph, no telephone, we'd linger in the age of stone. The world would sleep if things were done by men who say it can't be done. So it's quite something, it's, it's true. The man who misses all the fun is he who says it can't be done. Nothing can be done. I can't do anything. And a certain way, that is what a writer called Bernanos, he said, that's the most precious of the devil's potions. That's the potion of discouragement. The devil is always saying, you can't do it. Give up now. Just stay in bed. It's not worth the effort. Well, God is saying the very opposite. God is saying, you can. You can do it. Keep trying. Try again. Start again. You've fallen, but that doesn't mean anything. Get up again. Pope Francis also writes about this. He says, disappointment with life or with the church or with ourselves can tempt us to latch onto a sweet sorrow or sadness that the Eastern Fathers called acedia. So there's a special term for this, kind of sweet sorrow. We kind of, we kind of wallow in this sadness because we're disappointed with life or with the church or with ourselves. And it's, that is called acedia. So we can't do that. Let us say with James and John, Bosomus, we can do it. Also, it's good for us to do that with others. We have to be like a good father to one another. The good dad who encourages his, his boy, for instance, you can do it, encourages him to, to, well, to ride his bicycle, to catch that fish, or to run faster. All these kind of challenges, very typical of a father, also maybe of a mother, but I think in a particular way of a, of a father. Let's not give up on one another so quickly. James would not be St. James, if Jesus gave up on him because he didn't grasp the Christian, Christian message quickly. Remember, there's another incident with these two brothers where they have just gone and entered a village of the Samaritans. But the Samaritans were not enthusiastic about Jesus because he was going to Jerusalem and they essentially asked him and his apostles to scram, to leave the village. And we're told in the gospel that when, when James and John saw this, they went to Jesus and they asked you, Lord, Lord, do you want us to bid fire, come down from heaven and consume them? It's an amazing, amazing idea. Let's burn up this village. Let's call, a, call down an airstrike and, and destroy the village. And Jesus, we're told, turned and rebuked them and they went on their way to another village. Now I imagine that rebuke as being something like, not, not being something like, because it didn't happen this way. Hey, you two, why don't you just go and pack your bags and go home to mum and dad, because you're of no use to me. He didn't say that. We can imagine that he said, listen, James, John, that's not the way we'll do things. I want you to be saints, not terrorists. Try again. And they tried. And then over time, they became more and more loving, more gentle, more considerate, more forgiving, and of course they ended up being two great saints because Jesus was saying to them, you can do it. And of course then they kind of learned that and their little motto then is, we can do it, posmos. So let's join 
St. James today on his feast day, also saying that, I can do it. And the big I can do it, of course, is I can be a saint. Of course, with God's help, not without God's help, of course, but still, I can do it. Let's ask also our Mary, Queen of Saints, to help us to make that, make that daring proclamation. I can do it. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.